moment Thoughts of you run through my head Every time that I'm near you I realize that you're heaven sent Baby, I think you're truly something special Just what my dreams are really made of The meaning of black love. He having a bad day, I fill up the bathtub. She put on the oven mitt, be cooking a mad grub. You got beef with a nigga, put on them black gloves. Who run the world? Girls. Rim, you bugging. Beside every great man, bae is a good woman. Anybody think differently, gotta be a hater. Name one good man. Will Smith, Jada, Mello, Lala, Mandela, Winnie, Swiss, Alicia, Tupac, Afini, T.I., Tiny, Barack, Michelle. What about Dwayne Wade? Baby, we got Gabrielle, Nick, Mariah. Wait, that's about to end. They should stay together. Yeah, they could get counseling. Wiz, Amber. Yo, I heard he dead it up. Then we gotta switch it up. Bow Wow, Erica, Martin, Coretta, Biggie, Valletta, Jay Z, Beyonce, Kanye. Yo, babe, you know how I say my name? Pat, Post, Pat, Post. You gotta say yours like that, Remy. My Remy. Stop. <laughs> no, stop. Come on, babe. Babe, would you let me rap? All right. Thank you. I love you too. I like men at least six feet. Faithful don't cheat. So good he make me hate my X-Men like Mystique. Good conversation. Girl, he's so deep. Real intelligent. When he talking, I don't speak. Gives me TLC and he don't creep. My best friend. I ain't got a secret he won't keep. Street credibility. Basically, we met to a mutual friend by the name of Case Lake. And um, he was working with Runway before I even knew him. So long story short, he um he basically told me a couple of things about her. You know, I haven't never heard of music, obviously, but she was supposed to come to the studio to do a song with me, and she didn't come that particular day. And when she eventually came, you know, I was there to do the song, but ever since then, we just was cool. We talked all the time on the phone. That was how we met. But I actually met her before that. I actually met her before that, but um, you know, I was in the room, and she came in the studio just getting on his case, being disrespectful, throw feet up on the table, just took over the whole room and I was like, damn, I like her, man. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't saying that, I just laid in the cut and observed. So he likes to disrespect the kid. You know what I'm saying? And then um, eventually we met. That's my story. You wanna add on to that one? That is not the story. <laughs> that is not the story. Yeah, let's hear your version. First, um, like you said, with the case in this situation, like I was cool with Slay. And he would like for years and years he'd do, you know, his mixtape things, have me up on show, and I would be number one at well, at least in the top two. Then I just noticed for like three C D straight that it's this guy on the main campus that's the first person. So first before I even met him, I hated him. Like I he looked at me, he like me, but I hated him. Like, why is he in my stock? Why is he number one? Like, who is this guy? I wouldn't be him. I wouldn't be him. So I had seen him, we seen each other in the club before. That's yeah, the first time we've seen each other. And it was like on some passing by, but he wasn't really paying attention. He swear that he was looking to see if I was giving eye contact, but he wasn't paying attention, so I kept it moving. When I finally, the studio session that you were talking about was the first the first one that was set up. We tried to get all fly, get a crispy shape up because he thought I was coming, and I ain't go. <laughs> <laughs> so when I actually did go, I just popped up and caught them in there. And that's when I was quote unquote getting disrespectful, but I had all rights to it. He was having an argument, so he was just right. sitting there, being quiet, hoping that I didn't start aiming any of my aggressiveness towards him. Just observing this. Whatever. Then we did a song together, and then he was stalking me. And then... Let me tell you the real, the real no, story. No, all right. Wait, nah. Then, you know, he's just like, oh, you know, let me get your number for future references. Like, yeah, right, future references. Mm -hmm. But after that, we um, pretty much was just... Inseparable, like we call each other, hang out, drive around, break nights.
friends sitting in the car in front of the studio, in the right. studios, be on the phone, to the phone, hang out. And I'm saying I'm tired, but you're snoring, I hear you. No, I'm not, no, I'm not, but can we just stay on the phone, but that's pretty much how we met. But a sprinkle of something what he's in, the, in, the, in the club, when she gave me the eye in the club, <laughs> I seen it, but I was like, nah, she didn't give me the eye. You know what I mean? So I just kept it moving. I but I did see it, though. I did see it. I just kept it moving because I wasn't sure, you know what I mean? So you don't want to jump out the window. I waited and then eventually when Slay was telling me, yo, come to the studio, you know what I mean? She wanted to do a song with you. I was like, I knew she gave me the eye, you know what I mean? But eventually, like she said, we was inseparable. Like, we would be together and then on the way home, we would just be on the phone all the way until I got to my destination and she got to hers. And we'd fall asleep on the phone, you know what I mean? Just conversation. Our relationship is able to withstand, you know, all this time that went by because we genuinely, genuinely love each other. Like when it's real, like nothing is gonna separate that. Not, you know, bars, bricks, raw wire, people, you know, that are envious of our relationship or just anything that's positive. Because you know, we had our share of people just like, oh telling me, oh, I'm sure he doesn't really care. He's just doing this because X, Y, and Z. And, you know, on his side, you know, he kind of telling me that people were like, you know, why are you there for her? She wouldn't do it for you if it was the other way around. Not realizing that when somebody says that to him, that's that's a one-way ticket until he's never speaking to you again. And vice versa, like, oh, really? My husband's doing what? All right. That's somebody I don't want around me. So just, just the uh, way we view each other, and the care that we have for each other, that that's how you withstand anything. Like, when you get married, it's through everything. It's not, oh, but if you go to jail, you know, I'm not going to be there. Or if you get sick, or if you know you break your leg, it's not, I might have to be somewhere. It, it doesn't work that way. But I, I think we both strongly believe in the vows that we took. I actually did make friends while I was at that Bedford Hills. I was there, when I first got there, I saw that I'm not hanging with nobody, I don't want to be around any of these people, I'm going to be my time, and I want to leave. But six and a half years is a long time. And just in that environment, you encounter people, you live with them, you end up eating with them, and you know, you go through things, people lose their family members, people not being able to see their children, and just a whole lot of different situations that will draw you towards each, each other because you're all going through it together. So I can say, like, you know, I made a couple of friends that they, unfortunately, you know, due to my stipulations that I have and I was given upon my release, we were not allowed to interact with people who are felons or have a known criminal record. So it's like you're with these people for six and a half years, bonding with them because of their family and their children and just them as a person. And then because I left, I can't speak to them anymore. Like, and these are people that I see now as my friends more than friends that I grew up with. Well, um, the relationship that the advice that I would give, because I can't even say the relationship advice, just the advice in general that I would give to people that are together and they're going through any type of hardship. One is you definitely have to keep it between you and the person that you're going through it with. When you start inviting other people in to give their opinions or their perspective of what they think is the best thing for you. No one can tell you, you know, what's the best thing to do for your relationship or based on what they went through, this is what you should do. You should definitely, I believe, you know, consult everything with your partner first and try to keep as many people as possible out of it because not everybody has your good interests. And sometimes when things are going good or people see something that they would want to have or want to achieve, they become envious and you won't even know that they're, you know, trying to do things to separate it because they just don't want to see it. So that would be my one piece of advice. Yeah, my advice to anybody who in a relationship you go through hard times, like the experience would be similar to what she said, but I would just add on that um, you 
really got to genuinely love that person. I think people get in relationships for different reasons and get married for different reasons. And when it doesn't pan out that way, they feel offended, they feel some kind of way. I think when you, when, yeah, when you do things from the heart, when you do something from the heart, you don't expect nothing in return. Some people will do things for you and then they feel like you know you owe them something. So I just feel like you gotta be in that relationship or in that marriage for the right reasons or it's never gonna work. And you gotta you gotta show up. You gotta have respect for the person you're with. It all goes back to what I said initially, you gotta really love genuinely the person you're with because it's not gonna work if you're in that relationship for you know other things other than you know just being genuine, having genuine love for that individual. Nothing can break that. Like it's, it's nothing that can come between us. After what we just went through and other things we've been through, it's going to be hard for any any snake or anybody to try to come in between us for all the idiocy. It's not going to work. We can't penetrate steel with wood. Idiocy. Here we She always trying to correct me, but whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? But on a serious note, you know, you've got to have the utmost respect for the person you're with. You know what I mean? A woman is the most precious jewel. Every man, greater than a ruby, emerald, diamond, or sapphire, it takes a real man to rise to the woman above the rest so she can show how special she is. So I really get to see the all the good qualities in her just by being genuine. The music that I'm working on now is my sophomore album titled You Can't Stop Destiny. And um, how I plan on incorporating Remy in that is really not something that's premeditated. The, the music that we always did together was more spontaneous and from the heart. So I think when you do it like that, it kind of comes out better, you know what I mean? If we in the studio and the vibe feel right, the beat sound good, we go in. If it don't, we don't go in, you know what I'm saying? But, um, to add to that's that, how, that's how just make sure you don't even tell them don't discuss music. You said what? <laughs> you know, I got to tell them that we don't discuss music. Yeah, we don't, because we got two different outlooks. You know right. what I'm saying? We made an agreement about two years ago. We're not going to talk about music. You know, she Hollywood and I'm street. You know that is not true. <laughs> I'm sure the streets were back to different. I don't even want to say that. But anyway, he, you know, he likes a certain type of music, and I like a certain type of music. This right. guy is so heated in time, so I've been called, you know, groupie. I don't really like who's hot. Pun is rolling over in his grave. Like, <laughs> it's really intense. <laughs> so, I, um, I told him he didn't like rappers that came out before 1985. It was like that, so we just like, you know what? we're not talking about music ever, ever. Yeah, yeah. Nah, we got two different total outlooks. People probably would be surprised to hear that, but it's actually fine. What do you have? You'll see. I want to see it now. Oh, you thought I was behind the camera? Oh, I don't know. What are you doing, fellas? Yeah, Witness yeah, this. I'm just saying. That's the first person that got me flowers. No, it's not. No, it's not. You have yo, yo. He's not getting flowers. Can you ask a question for me, please? We on camera. My, 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 my camera phone ain't too good. Yeah, um, yesterday when you were driving me home, what did I tell you I wanted to pick up for my wife? Uh, Say it again. I said nothing. Look, look, he said it. He said it. What did I tell you I wanted to pick up for my wife yesterday? Come on, don't play with Who me, is man. That? That's oh. He didn't say anything. I didn't tell him to say. You call, I called him right in front of you. Don't see. play with me, man. Okay, so he said he wanted to give me flowers, so I ain't get them. He didn't take me. Remember my shit? Took my shit from my truck. <laughs> oh. He said you told him don't do it. He, t I mean, he told you don't do it. He fucking with you. You know he gonna fuck with you. That's him. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm getting your number deleted. I was coming home with those last night, but my, shit, my situation happened. Mm -hmm. Damn. 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 Come on, no. All right. I'm changing his number, by the way, too. You're not getting a new one. <laughs>